Coming up on Ask the Tech Guy, pre-internet encryption. Encrypting for the cloud. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from the Twit LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can assure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Hey, everybody. I'm your tech guy, Leo Laporte. It's time for Ask the Tech Guy. A great question from John in Greenwood, Indiana. He says, what software, free or paid, is best for data encryption? I want to encrypt prior to backing up on the cloud. I'm aware I won't be able to read from the cloud without downloading and then decrypting. Uh, John, it's a great question. In fact, it's important because I think a lot of people assume, well, if I use OneDrive or iCloud or Google Drive or any one of the cloud services, my data is encrypted up there, right? It's private. It's safe. Most cloud providers do not encrypt data on their servers. And if they do, they use it, uh, they do it with a key that they own. So at any point, they could offer your data to law enforcement with a subpoena or a rogue employee could snoop around and read your data. If you're really concerned about privacy, you need to encrypt that data before you put it on a cloud service. Our friend Steve Gibson calls it P, pre-egress encryption. Then he decided, you know what, that's not a very good acronym. So he changed it to PI, pre-internet encryption. I think that may be a little bit better. There are, when we should mention, a few cloud providers that do this. They, they do what we call trust no one encryption or end-to-end -end encryption. If you see those phrases, end-to-end -end encryption or trust no one, that means only you have the key. LastPass, for instance, is end-to-end -end encrypted. Uh, Steve likes a, a service called Sync.com, S-Y-N-C.com. They're end-to-end -end encrypted. Only you can see the data. I've used Trezorit in the past, T-R-E-S-O-R-I-T.com. They have end-to-end -end encryption. There's also kind of a, a mid-ground. I use a service called pCloud. Again, a bad name, but a great service. They Normally, nothing is encrypted, but you can designate one photo fo folder as a crypto folder that only you have access to. You provide the key, the, the passphrase, and only you can unencrypt it. The reason most cloud services aren't encrypted is because it limits the kind of things they can do for you. Uh, as our correspondent said, uh, John said, I can't, I realize I won't be able to read stuff in the cloud. You know, that's one thing Dropbox does. You can click a file and play it back or render it. You can't do that if it's encrypted encrypted without giving it the key. Um, they can't do deduping either. So if many people upload the same file, uh, they have to keep a separate version of that file for everybody because they don't know it's the same file because it's encrypted. So there are lots of reasons cloud providers don't like to do end-to-end -end encryption. However, there's no reason to not use end-to-end -end encryption. You just have to do it yourself. Now, here's one point that's really important from my point of view. Any crypto tool you use has to be open source. There are a lot of closed source, proprietary crypto tools out there. And you, what that means is you really have to trust the company to be doing it right and not to put any back doors in it. But isn't that the problem we have right now? We don't want to trust Dropbox or iCloud or Google Drive. <laughs> so trusting another third party to do the encryption doesn't really make you any more secure. When it's open source, that means anybody can look at the source code, at how the encryption is done, make sure there's no backdoors for the NSA, there's no vulnerabilities, the encryption is strong encryption and really does what it says it's going to do. So I wouldn't consider any third-party, un you know, proprietary, unopen source, non-open source software. The one I would recommend is called Cryptomator. And there's another advantage to open source. Usually those programs are free. Cryptomator is free client-side encryption for your cloud files. It's at cryptomator.org. You can see the URL here or go to C-R-Y-P-T-O-M-A-T-O-R.org. 
org. And it's really done right. It does a couple of things I, I like. Some um, uh, cloud encryption services take all the data in your, let's say, Dropbox folder, encrypt it into a blob, and then back that up. Cryptomator does it file by file. So that's important. That's valuable because it means... Uh, you can download an individual file, for instance. You know what that file is. But it, it may, you know, in that case, you may leak some metadata like the file name. Um, You've got to keep that in mind. Cryptomator likes it, makes it possible for you to have uh, nonsensical file names. You might want to do that. I just think this is a very good way to go. My decision was not to go through the inconvenience of using a program like Cryptomator and then using an unencrypted storage system like Dropbox. I decided to use pCloud because I could decide which data I want to make end-to-end -end encrypted and which not. Acknowledging that there's going to be some inconvenience with the end-to-end -end encrypted. But most of the time, the stuff I'm storing, it doesn't need to be private. It's you know, it's just some stuff that I keep track of, notes, scripts to this show, things like that. So I don't care if those are encrypted. And so I store them in the more convenient, unencrypted portion of pCloud. And then the stuff like tax returns, social security numbers, um, uh, keys to, you know, various crypto accounts, things like that, I will store in the encrypted folder on pCloud. And I like that the ability to do both. You know, you could do that with Cryptomator too. Not encrypt everything that goes to Dropbox. Just have one special part of Dropbox that's kept encrypted. So that's the system I recommend. Cryptomator at Cryptomator.org. Great question, though. I thank you for asking it, John. And I think it's an eye-opener for a lot of people. You know, Apple's always talking about privacy, for instance. And one would assume, oh, well, that must mean that no one can read my iCloud. Not true. Not true. And we know that's the fact because... Well, frankly, uh, Apple has given people's iClouds account to law iCloud accounts for law to law enforcement for many many years. Uh, that's how Paul Manafort uh, got convicted. He uh, was messaging over WhatsApp. He was smart. He knew WhatsApp was encrypted. What he didn't know is when you turn on backup of your WhatsApp messages to iCloud, it's unencrypted, and law enforcement was able to get. Uh, a subpoena, go to Apple, say, give us that data, and they got it. We know that because it was revealed in the indictment. There are many, many cases of Apple handing over that iCloud data. So remember, they do have access to that data unless you lose something like a box cryptor to uh, make it more private. I think it's, it's a good thing to be aware of. Uh, Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you, of course, by our great sponsor, LastPass. From access to authentication to passwords, LastPass manages every entry point to your business so you can mitigate risk while improving employee productivity. Uh, and LastPass goes above and beyond to ensure the security of all its users. In LastPass, your data is encrypted and decrypted at the device level. Increased security doesn't have to be complex for your business, not when you're using LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. That's it for this episode of Ask the Tech Guy. We do this every Monday. I hope you'll tune in every Monday. We have audio and video versions. Best thing to do, subscribe in your favorite podcast client. That way you'll get it automatically. And of course, the long form of Ask the Tech Guy is the Tech Guy radio show. That's six whole hours every Saturday and Sunday. We have a podcast for that too. Search for The Tech Guy. But come back next Monday for another Monday for another Ask the Tech Guy. I would love to get your question on the show. If you want to send me one, email askthetechguy at twit.tv. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm your tech guy. We'll see you next time. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email askthetechguy at twit.tv.